Hi there folks, welcome to Dunsey's Guitar World and welcome to another 10 or 15 minutes of your life you'll never get back listening to an old Scottish guy talking about guitars on YouTube So what's on your mind this week Dunsey? Well, before we get started, I had an accident this week There's all the goddamn brownies Not that I take the accident Yo Rumsfield! Or that one. But uh, it's strange, I'm the person who's always saying to people, be careful when you're working with knives, you could cut your finger. And what did I do? I cut my, I mean, you probably can't see it, but I cut my finger. And it's one of these, it's like a Stanley knife blade in my finger and it wouldn't stop bleeding. I couldn't play guitar for about two or three days every time I started playing guitar. It started bleeding, I mean, it's a pretty rock and roll thing to do, be bleeding all over your guitar. It takes a lot of cleaning up, eh? So I couldn't play guitar for a few days. So what I did was, I fixed the Aria Pro 2 LC 550 from 1977. This guitar here. It's got a Yamaha sticker on the back. Which is strange, because it's an Aria, it's not a Yamaha. So what did I do? Well, I'll tell you what, I had to give it a good clean. I almost had to take it out in the back garden and power hose it down. Very dirty. But it took a lot of time to get everything off the guitar. I soaked all the hardware in a bath of vinegar and uh, some WD-40 overnight and it's fairly cleaned up. Then I took some silver foil, tried to get the worst of the tarnish and off it. Cleaned all the fretboard, masked off the frets, cleaned them all as well, took them down a little bit. So it plays really nice. Now in the unboxing video I showed the controls were completely seized up, they just would not move. So I had to replace all of the electrics, new pots, new capacitors, everything like that. So it's uh, sounding good. So let's look at the construction of this fine instrument. So it is a set neck, so a wooden neck, but in the Matsumoku made areas seem to have like a bolt in the tenon or a screw in the tenon holding on as well. So I mean You'd need to be pretty angry to rip the neck out of that. Mr McGee, don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. It's a belt and braces approach, I guess. Oh, and by the way, for anybody asks, Dunsey, you're wearing a Boston cap. Where, where did you get that? I got it in Boston. I was in Boston a couple of years ago on holiday with the family. I loved Boston. I'll tell you what, if you live in Boston, you live in a beautiful city. Really, really enjoyed it. We are only there for four days, then we went out to Hyannis. But uh, yeah, I want to go back to Boston. Back to the guitar. So if you look at the body construction, it seems to be like it's a sandwich body. And when you look inside the bridge cavity, you can see it's solid. It's like it's got a solid back in two pieces and then there's like a maple cap. I mean, I think it's maple. But then on top of that, to give the the finish like a sort of flame, I mean it's not it's not particularly flamed. It seems to be like a piece of ply, three ply ply. So it's solid, it's not like the Greco EG five hundreds from the same sort of era which are chambered basically. You know there's big there's big gaps under the top. So this is solid, I mean it's all glued down. So I mean it's not quite up to Gibson construction, I think. Maybe later in the 70s, 79, that's when they really started nailing the Gibson style of construction. But what a beautiful guitar, plays really nice as well. Look how shiny the frets are. So it's very clean now. I have to say it's very clean, I'm pleased with this. The one thing is, the, uh, I showed in the unboxing video, there's a, an odd tuner. It's like one of those Imperial style tuners. Somebody's obviously replaced it. And it's about nine and a half pounds so it's heavy-ish you know not as heavy as me but it's heavy-ish no fret end binding on these lower models as i said in the catalog catalog now in the 1977 catalog there's a lc 500 and an lc 550 the difference i can see apart from the price is the 550 this one had gold hardware i mean it's difficult to tell it's gold anymore, there's so much tarnish and worn off, but yeah, it's very nice. I have to say I'm pleased with this. 
So that's what I've done since I came in from Japan it three weeks ago now. Gave it a damn good clean, took it to pieces, gave it a good scrub and then replaced all the electrics and now it's all working. Three weeks and the guitar comes in, it's all working, not bad and it sounds good. So what do the clean sounds sound like Dunsey? Let's hear the clean sounds. Nice clean sounds, eh? These are the stock pickups. There's no markings on them. I don't know. Don't know what they are. The Gotos. I don't, don't know who was making pickups for Aria in 1977. If you do know, please please let me know in the comments. But they sound good, clean. Sound good, clean. Distortion, Dunsey. A bit of classic 70s type overdrive. Can you do that? I think I can do that. <laughs> overdrive sounds, nice pickups. It's funny though because you can only really tell a certain amount, you know, this in your spare music room volume. Well, your spare room is actually a music room. You can only tell at sort of low volume. I would need to try these through like a big amp, martial amp, and a rehearsal room situation because I was always worried there was going to be, you know, microphonic feedback. You can't really tell till you're playing it, playing in battle conditions really. So I will take this to rehearsal at some point in the near future. See what it sounds like through proper amplification. So as ever, there's a little tune after I shut up that I put together. Again, this one took a good sort of 20-30 seconds to write this song. I mean, I say song, but it's just a collection of bits of music. And uh, on this one, apologies in advance, I did quite a bit of solo as well. And if you stick till the very end, I even use my wah wah pedal. So I mean, that alone, is worth the price of entry. So I do hope you enjoy the tune, I hope you've enjoyed the video, as ever it's a privilege and a pleasure bringing you guitar content on YouTube on Dunsey's Guitar World. Cheers for now. <laughs>